Making time for us here on KTN News. You know, so many people are asking, where is Babu? Babu is so quiet. Umekua wapi? Yama unatuchosha na kazi tu. Thank you, Ashley. Sijanya maza kwa ubaya. I've been around, very much around. And uh, there are other things I'm doing, other projects I've been, uh, I've been doing. When it comes to performance of my parliamentary duties, in terms of oversight representation, I, I do them way very, very, very well and also legislation. I do them very well. When it comes to my personal life, that is family life, I have to perform my duties. Yeah, very, very important and urgent. Yeah. When it comes to just yes, general work, work ethics and when it comes to family issues, also being in line with, with my spirituality, with my almighty God. Yes. I've been around, maybe in the political limelight, that's when I, I decided to slow down a little bit because there's a time and a season for everything. Says the Bible in Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time to work and a time to politic. Right now it's a time to work for me. Okay. Yeah, it's not a time to politic. But when politics come, then why not? I know that I'm a very serious political animal. Oh, I will yeah. just execute Definitely. perfectly well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not out. Uh, um, I'm not out. Well, buyer, but I, I'm. I'm still in circulation. Yes. In Embakasi East Republic, as we call it, because it has a supreme leader yeah. that you are looking at, <laughs> Doctor Babu Owen. Yes. I'm so humble. <laughs> <laughs> So when it comes to the projects that I do in Mbakasi East constituency, I go by the issues of concern, the things that affect uh, the great people of Mbakasi. At number one, roads, poor roads, which since I've done around 78 roads in total, fully tarmacked in the whole constituency. Number two is uh, water. Clean water for consumption is a main challenge because uh, we, are being, uh, we are being given water on on different intervals. And uh, we've worked, we've since worked on a water reserve that is at Embakasi Garrison that is going to provide over 140 million liters mm -hmm. of water that shall be soon pumped from Muranga to Gigiri, then to Embakasi. So I've also done boreholes in Embakasi's constituency to provide temporary solutions for my people. Mm -hmm. And these boreholes are around 20 in number, just to provide temporary solutions. We've done uh, We've done uh, schools in Embakasi's constituency. As we speak, I'm in the process of constructing two schools, Donom Secondary School, and also in the process of constructing Tasia Primary School. Mm. And uh, I do this because I know what education is. Why not for education, I would have never been where I am. So it is purely education that is going to help us, and also the role of education in the growth of an economy. We know uh, in, in, in matters provision of uh, skills, Everywhere you go is about skills. You are where you are because of education. And so, oh, in terms of uh, construction of schools, renovation of schools in Embakasi's constituency, purchase of buses in Embakasi's constituency, to all the schools, uh, the next that I'm doing is purchasing of three buses that is in the process uh, uh, to Edelville Primary School, Donham Primary School, and Embakasi Primary School, and also issuance of bursaries, because bursaries is very important for our children. Things used to work during Uru's time. Things used to work during Kibaki's time. Things are worst now. Nothing is working because these parents are, 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 are depending on bursaries for school fees. And uh, going by the doctrine of, uh, of uh, separation of powers, checks and balances, which was, uh, which was uh, opined or started, or the person who came up with that is called uh, Charles Louis uh, de Bruno de Montesquieu. Okay, in the 17th century. Yeah. And that, that doctrine is being messed up by the president as, as at now because of the influence within the parliament. Right now, members of parliament should not even work in parliament if there is no bursaries for our people. Why, what are you doing in parliament? And our people are languishing in abject poverty. Mm -hmm. Our people are not going to school. Our children are not going to school. What are, doing, what are you doing in parliament? Just to pass laws that are going to oppress the common mwanainchi, the health laws that are being passed, the, uh, the, the affordable housing, which is a private good, which should not be passed. Yeah. Government should not provide 
uh, uh, private goods to citizens, they should create an enabling environment for the provision of the private goods. The work of the government is to provide public goods like road, clean environment, and encourage consumption of merit goods like, um, like health and education. But in our case, what is the government doing? So this government is just nonsensical. Priorities are bottom up, misplaced. Yeah. Bottom um, up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, those are their priorities. All right, let's get to the nitty gritties. And I want us to talk about the affordable housing bill and what happened. Was it about two weeks ago when we saw you and some of other legislators allied to Azimio walk out? What was the thought process behind that? You no, know, Ashley, it is sad to see as a leader your people being oppressed. Sitting in parliament, stamping, contributing to what has been brought before you. A decision had been made earlier. Through, and, uh, through duress, members of parliament were being put, uh, uh, they were under undue influence, being thoughtful. Mm -hmm. You remember when they met in Naivasha, yeah. the Kenya Kwanza government, the Uda, uh, government, they met in uh, Naivasha, and a riot act was read that you must pass this thing. That is not in the spirit of separation of powers, checks and balances. Parliament should be an independent body, making its own decisions, making laws, not for an individual as they are doing for Ruto, but making laws that are going to cover the interest, the inherent and inalienable interest of Kenyans, of the citizens. So we could not sit there and watch a decision that had been made. Sitting there, what for? Because by the end of the day, they were still going to pass it because of the numbers that they are boasting of. Mm -hmm. So the members of parliament who are in UDA, the other day you saw them again fighting these, uh, the, the, <laughs> the taxes that were imposed on farmers. Yes. And they're the same people who voted for those taxes. Now, during the same walkout, we saw, you know, as in new leaders accuse President William Ruto of employing strong arm tactics to influence the proposed law. It's been said over and over that the legislative arm of government is compromised. So then what happens to common Kenyans who elect leaders to go fight for them, yet at the end of the day, they are compromised? Parliament checks the executive. The executive provides checks and balances to the other two arms of government. government. Yes. The judiciary also does its work of checks and balances. Therefore, all these arms of government should be independent. They should work independently in keeping checks and balances to ensure that one arm of the government does not exploit the interest of the Kenyan citizens. Mm -hmm. And that's why at times judiciary declare some laws that we make obsolete, mm -hmm. not absolute. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why we in parliament, if we see that executive is misbehaving, we see how we provide checks and balances on them through even bringing not limited to impeachment motions. Yeah. Also ensuring that we control the budget, the budget making process. Okay? Those are the responsibilities that we should be doing. Mm -hmm. But here comes a team, let me call them a group, because they, are, they have a mission. They are missionary. They are not visionary. They have a mission to satisfy the interest of their president. A mission to ensure that Kenyan who is not going to school does not go to school. A mission to ensure that the lives are messed up. They lack the vision. The vision to ensure that that child at home access, accesses quality education. A vision to ensure that you and I are living in a conducive environment. And a vision to ensure that Kenyan, the youth, get jobs in this nation. Mm. So that is what they lack. So them, they are serving a specific mission. So when they come there, they come there saying that we in UDA, we in Kenya Kwanza, the moment we cross this road and go past this road into the parliament, we become parliamentarians, nice. legislatures. Yes. We are coming to make, to legislate. We are coming to make laws. But then they are coming with something fixed. So the problem comes in because of fear. They are being intimidated. Some are being given money. Okay? Mm -hmm. That those are the selfish interests that they are serving. So they are not serving the interest of common money. Because a normal Kenyan member of parliament 
will not pass obsolete laws, will not pass laws that are going to oppress Kenyans. Because they must, they must think through it. Because these laws will catch up with you. At some point, you'll not be in politics uh, forever, but lo those laws will still be there. And those laws are going to catch up with you as a member of parliament. So you need to be a visionary leader, not a missionary leader. You know, having been in the 12th parliament and in the 13th parliament right now, you know, looking at both and, of course, the 11th parliament, if we can, you know, b borrow comparison from it, um, do you think that parliament has failed to protect the principle of parliamentary independence and if so how do we drill it into our leaders that the parliament is an independent or co-equal branch of government and not appendaged to the executive you know the rule of law is something that we came and found it and this begs the question that between man and law what came first okay <laughs> law existed before the existence of Man, yeah. even when we go to the natural jurisprudence, the natural jurisprudence states that there was and there is a deity, that there is a supreme being that, who is the almighty God that made laws. And then we come to the positivist jurisprudence that states that, okay, there is, yes, uh, 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 the existence of God and yeah. the laws. Even the Ten Commandments, they existed, right? Yes. And then... The positivists come and say that no, the law that exists is just the written laws. Mm -hmm. And then the judiciary also comes and say that we are realists, therefore the law must be made by the judge. Mm -hmm. So this is jurisprudence, okay? So what I can say that these laws existed before the existence of President Ruto. Therefore Ruto must respect the laws because when he was being sworn, he held the supreme law of the land, the apex of the land, the constitution that was promulgated in 2010. Yes. Whoever goes against that spirit of the law becomes repugnant and inconsistent to the natural laws and justice. You know, Speaker is an appendage of the executive. Yeah. Actually, he should be sitting in the, in, the, in the executive when they're having the executive, the meeting, the CSS. He should be there. Why? Because we cannot pass retrogressive laws, laws that does not add up. And then you want to support it because your party wants it. Imagine the laws that were passed by uh, Jubilee. Jubilee right now is a weak party, right? But Jubilee produced a, pre a president for two terms, right? But the laws that they made, some of them were not good. True. So you end up losing the party leaves, the law remains. Even, even Kenya Kwanzaa will not probably exist by 2027 mm -hmm. or beyond 2032, it will not exist. But the laws that they are making, so the party is there temporary, living, but they are living permanent laws that are affecting the lives of the people. So the speaker should also be knowing this and be very, very rational. Uh, the good news is that we have an intelligent speaker in Wetangula. Mm -hmm. He's very intelligent, so he should not be drawn into oppressing or passing oppressive laws. We all know that majority have their way and the minority have their say. Of course, the affordable housing bill is supposed to go to Senate. What then happens if your counterparts at the Senate emulate what happened at the National Assembly? What's the end game considering walking out may seem an exercise in futility? Actually, what's happening there is an exercise in futility and uh, they will decide what they should do because, again, at the Senate, there are no numbers. And these people will tell you that, okay, majority will have their way, minority will have their say. There, there is always a minority report that will be captured in the Hansard. So our, 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 our ideas will always be captured, no matter how unpopular in the eyes of those other many MPs from the Kenya Kwanzaa, of the MPs from Kenya Kwanzaa, no matter how unpopular, in their eyes, not in the eyes of the citizens. In the eyes of the citizens, our ideas are very popular. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a big problem. Whenever the president walks in any part of this country, he's booed. Even if another MP is being booed and he's there, it is a signal, he's being signaled as he, people, are dis people disrespect him because he doesn't respect what people should be having that which they should be having. He doesn't respect that. So people are disrespecting everywhere. And he should stop walking. I don't know 
why campaign when there's a state house there you're even renovating with billions and then you don't want to sit there you want to walk around i don't know like what walking around you need to sit down and work as the president. At what time do you get reports from the principal uh, secretaries, from the cabinet secretaries, from different organs and departments of this government? At what point will you be briefed? At what point are you working when you keep on walking? So you are walking, not working. Remember Kibaki sat in the office? People could even ask, where is the president? Yeah. But he was working. Now we can see the fruits of what he did. And we miss him. And we miss him very much, by the way. But here we have a president who is looking for validation, legitimacy. Okay? From people. He's already there. Serve. It doesn't matter how you got there. Serve the people. But you can't serve the people by walking around and you don't know what is happening. And number two, receiving wrong advice. Those people that he has put there as economic advisors, yeah. those people know nothing. There is no economics they know. So, yeah. president should sit down and work, not walk. Earlier this year, you did say that President William Ruto should sit down since he already has power and take charge of the nation and let not citizens suffer because he wants to please other super countries. What did you mean by this? I'm, no, I'm so disappointed that uh, Ruto, you know, me, I thought this man was a very serious man. Even when we were campaigning, the way he was talking, because as, 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 as an opponent, we had to go through some of the, the, the manifesto and the policies that he wanted to implement. Yeah. But they sounded so nice, so sugary, okay? So flattery. But right now, what is happening? I'm so disappointed. He's a person who was brought up from a very humble background. A person... Who, is a, who was a hustler, right now is a dynasty, okay? Right now, the president is not fighting anything. There's a, there's a, there's, there's a lot happening in, 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 uh, in State House, in the country, and I'm just disappointed at Ruto. IMF is not interested in us repaying their money. Otherwise, if they were interested, what would they do? They would say, we want you people to industrialize, we want you people to grow, we want to encourage local consumption of goods so that you can get money, you repay us. But instead they are saying, you have to increase central bank rates. If you increase central bank rates in economics, what are you doing, my dear? Because people, people borrow from the commercial banks. If you increase these interest rates, two things will happen. Number one, industries will close down, businesses will close down, because people will not take loans that are expensive. Once they take loans that are expensive to pay, to repay, then they will be forced to close down because they will have nothing. Number two, the goods produced from these expensive loans taken, that value will be factored in these goods. Therefore, the prices of goods will go up. Locally produced goods will go up. Therefore, we will start looking at the West and the imports. Are you getting the secret yes. here? So the moment you look at the imports and forget the forget the, the locally, the domestically produced goods, then it means that those imports we are encouraging what we call the foreign absorption or absorption on imports, which is too wrong. There was a time Mexico was in serious debt crisis. How did they get out of this? By keyword absorption. Because so many Americans had companies in, uh, in, in Mexico, okay? Then, these companies were making money, then taking back to America. So there were leakages into other economies, into the economy of America, and Mexico was not getting anything. Yeah. Then what did they decide to do? They decided to increase the tax for those companies, okay? Mm -hmm. Which we are not doing here successfully, because those multinational companies, we should increase taxes for them if we want to encourage our domestic uh, growth, then we need to increase for them, we discourage them as we promote our local companies. Mm -hmm. For example, we have Absa Bank, mm -hmm. based in South Africa. Yeah. Yes, it provides jobs here, but in a year they are making over 40 billion mm -hmm. as a profit. Mm -hmm. All that 40 billion as a profit is not being used in Kenya, it goes back to so South Africa. Therefore, why don't we overtax this 40 billion, okay, mm -hmm. instead of increasing 
taxes for Kenyans here in terms of fuel. Okay? So the moment we start reasoning like that, then a country will grow. But go back to colonization. Ask yourself, why were we colonized? Two main reasons. Number one, provision of raw materials to the industries in the colonizers' uh, Britain, right? Provision of raw materials. Then we were selling them cheaply. They were getting them cheaply. Then they sell us the finished products expensively. Yeah. The moment the export is little, you get little in export, and you receive more in import, you cannot grow. Why? Kenya depends on 80% of imported goods. Then imagine that a toothpick we can't make. Imagine tissue papers, what we can't do. Everything we import, 80% including eggs, right? Mm. All that money from the imports goes back to all those countries which are out of Kenya. So that is what we call the import absorption. Mm. We need to encourage domestic absorption. So IMF is not interested in us paying this be, uh, the loans, the debts. Why? Because they want to continue supplying us with goods, yeah. okay, yeah. as they get raw materials from us, okay, and they, they discourage our local production because the moment there's serious local production, even if tax is increased and there's serious production internally, you will not complain because life is good, yeah. okay? Yeah. Let's now talk about Azimio leader Rilo Dinger's AU bid. Of course, you know, we've been seeing the recent dalliance with President William Ruto that has sparked concerns about potential compromises within the opposition. From where you sit as a member of the opposition, do you think the opposition is compromised? Opposition is not compromised. Everybody has a dream, everybody has a vision. Baba's dream is to be the chairperson of AU. Okay. The dream was to be the president. That already has passed. Okay. That already has passed. Not unless now we are still focusing on 2027, which, has, which still he has that right. He has a democratic right to contest in 2027. But before then, there is the isness. And life in life, there is the isness and the oughtness. Mm -hmm. So you must achieve the isness for you to get the oughtness. Okay. So you can, you can dream of the oughtness, but you must get the isness. Now, the isness now is a you chair person. Mm -hmm of which this AU chairperson, Ruto is one of the voters. He's going to vote. So Baba is allowed to campaign, and he's allowed to campaign and ask for Ruto's vote. There is nothing wrong with that. But there is the institution of the opposition. If at all we were saying that we are now in bed with the government, why would we walk out during the housing levy mm -hmm. bill? We walked out, which means that opposition is still doing its work, and it's still intact. Okay? So... To me, I don't know, politics you can never say never, yeah. but tomorrow I don't know how I can still stand and say now that I'm, I'm now supporting Root. It is very difficult for me to do so, okay? Because personally I have my principles. Baba can even work with Root or how much he wants to work with him. I have no problem with that. It is for the sake of the AU. As Babu Oweno, my role is to keep this government in check, and that is what I'm going to do, and nobody will tell me not to do so. I will do it. Now, as the Azimio leader prepares to exit Kenya's political scene, you know, eyes right now are on who is going to be succeeding him. And just, I think, last week on our sister station, Radio Maisha, that question was posed to, you know, some of the listeners, and your name came up. Do you think you are ready if that opportunity presents itself? Do you think that you're ready to succeed as in your leader, Raila Odinga. This is not an opportunity you wait to be given. You are taking this is an opportunity that you take. So are you taking Power abhors a vacuum, okay? And it is not, this should be a conversation for another day because Baba is still our leader, okay? okay? And he, when he's still our leader, we will listen to what he says because he's our boss. So we will literally work under him as usual. Mm -hmm. In the event that Baba wins the AU, which I'm really praying, by the way, Baba should win the AU. It is one thing that the Almighty God should help Baba to win. Yeah. Just because this, this, this gentleman has really tried for us. He's really fought for the interest of Kenyans, okay? Yeah, yes. And he should win this. In the event that this happens, and he goes to, uh, uh, to be the chairperson of the AU commission, mm -hmm. then 
if he is not going to participate in politics, we are still politicians. We are still going to work as politicians. We will form our team that we will ensure that we keep this government in check so that the government can deliver for the people. So it's not an easy ride that if Baba is not there, then nothing is going to happen. Okay? There are those also who are ambitious. It is good to dream, but to a man, too much ambition destroyeth a man. However, too little takes him nowhere. So a man, either way, must always be ambitious. Okay? So we all have ambition. And my ambition, nobody can come and tell me that Babu, that his ambition is better than mine. Because that person did not put me in politics. So what, what, what can he come and tell me? It is the citizens and the Wanainch who will decide. And as things are, people have decided and you know. Me and you, we know who people want to, <laughs> to take charge of that. Okay? Okay. Uh, so then what's your ambition? My ambition is simple. Okay. My ambition is to ensure that that child who is not going to school gets school fees. My ambition is to ensure that the people of Mbakasi's constituency get the services that they deserve as of now. My ambition is to ensure that Kenyans get those laws that are going to protect them, not oppressive loans, okay. laws. My ambition is to ensure that I work for Kenyans and deliver them to the city of victory. That is the ambition that I want to fight for. Which, which, which is, okay. is, is it still Kandan or <laughs> <laughs> a city? Of course, Kandan is the only city that has milk and, <laughs> and honey and, and, uh, and everything nice. Who would be the ideal candidate to succeed Baba? You know, Baba is a unique leader. And I can tell you for free that Baba is, 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 is the only leader that I've come across, a leader who is loved passionately. I've never heard of any leader loved that much in the whole world, by the way, in the whole continent and in the whole world. Baba is loved passionately by the people. Mm -hmm. I did campaign alongside Baba went to 280 constituencies out of 290 constituencies, and I could see the love that the people have for Baba. It is genuine love. Yeah. And therefore, fitting in Baba's shoes, we might not get such a candidate anytime soon. But leaders are always created. Mm. Leaders are always built. God also knows that, you know, after this leader, I will have this leader. When after Moses, there was Caleb until it went up to Gideon, okay, in that process. So leaders will always come up. Leaders, but we want those leaders who can at least try to be even one-eighth of a quarter of what Baba is. We know, we know there is no leader who can be exactly what Baba is, yeah. but even one-eighth of a quarter. But we also have those leaders who are also very aspiring, okay? Mm -hmm. But the leaders that we will not accept are leaders that are appointed for us. We will not accept, and I will be the first person to rebel, okay? Yeah, okay? Because those are not leaders. We want a leader to come on the ground and let the people decide. But leader that will be told that this one is a leader, this one is a leader. Those we will not subscribe to that school of thought. Okay. That I can tell you for free, okay? Yeah. Leadership comes from, from God. Yeah. So the qualities of such leader, number one, that leader must be an intellectual, and the intellectual capacity in the mental faculty of that leader must be at optimum. Number two, that leader must be very, very courageous and bold. Number three, that I would have started with, that leader must be God-fearing. Must know that you seek ye first unto the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto you. Number four, that leader must be ready to sacrifice for the interest of Kenyan citizens. Number five, that leader must be young. How young is young? That leader must be young, okay? Young young? You can even be old but youthful at, <laughs> at heart and in mind. But that leader must be young because okay. we have a generational change. The youth must be given what belong to them, okay. okay? So that leader must be young so that at least is futuristic, okay? We don't want a leader that very soon again will start saying that, ah, no way, sasa tena ka kando, we need another person, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And that leader must be in a position not to wait for anything but to take the way these people are taking seats for the presidency must that leader must be ready to take that presidency we will not wait for anything because we've waited for long and we need to go to that city of victory 
Let's now talk about the Embakasi gas explosion. Of course, a recent exclusive done by KTN News highlighted the pain and anguish that some of those victims are still going through. As the area member of parliament, doesn't this appeal to you not just as a leader, but also as a human? The fact that, you know, these victims are still going through so much anguish, yet nothing is being done. This issue of Embakasi has been something which is so sad, a very sad tragedy. And it was paining me and paining other Kenyans. When State House is just close to Embakasi East, and when my people died so far, we have 13 deaths, okay? And we have over 640 people who are seriously injured, grievous harm. These people, the president did not make a point of going even to see these people, even in hospital. But when uh, the other legend passed on, the whole cabinet moved to Rift Valley. President moving from State House to Rift Valley will take not less than three billion in arrangement of the presidential visit. Not less than three billion, I'm telling you, in terms of security, in terms of other resources that are required. Okay? We saw the same legend being given a house worth seven million. My people just needed a house less than 20,000. Those Mabati houses is just less than 20,000. Yeah. For you just to put iron sheets together and, and timber and make a house. Less than 20,000. It is the Azimio team that contributed money to help these people. Baba removed one million Kenya shillings. I removed one million and later on added two other million. So I removed three million Baba one million, and then there was one extra million from members of parliament. We had five million, and then thanks to Kenyans who contributed 130,000 Kenya shillings. This money, those who were deceased, okay? Those families, I gave them 45,000 each to all those families. Those who were admitted in hospital, I gave them 20,000 Kenya shillings each. Then there were those who were IDPs in Embakasi Social Law. I gave them 12,000 Kenya shillings each. Then there were those, depending on the degree of injuries. Some I was giving 10,000, some I was giving 5,000 Kenya shillings. Okay? So, my dear, if all this was left on my shoulders, yes, I don't complain, it is my responsibility. These, these are my people. But the same people, Ruto got 27,000 votes in Embakasi East. 30,000 votes in Embakasi East. Does it mean that those people did not want him? They are those who wanted him there, right? Mm -hmm. So why then can't he just serve without discrimination? Rigadi went there and promised that within one hour, he would give those people food and he would give those people money. He went and disappeared. So they were coming to laugh at us. We will solve our challenges as the people of, as the people of Mbakasi's constituency. We don't even need that help from the government now. We know how we will help ourselves. As Achebe said one time that an orphaned calf will always scratch its own back. We will scratch our own backs. We don't care about whatever they think about. We are not bitter about them. We've even forgiven them. Okay? But my people are still suffering. I'm still looking for medicine. The medicine that is going to help these people in terms of antibiotics, because people who get serious burns, they, they may pass on because of two reasons. The first one is because of infections. Okay? Because of the aftercare. That is the most important thing. And then number two, their bodies are exposed because the skin is gone, the, sk the skin uh, is burnt, so therefore they lose water through dehydration. So that loss of water. And then they also need a lot of food rich in protein that is going to uh, regenerate the cells, okay? And uh, so generally, we are still in talks. I talked to, to the CEO Kemsa and the chairman. They promised they're going to give me some drugs. And because they're in Embakasi, they must give because they are situated in Embakasi. Actually, from Radi to Kemsa mm. is just two minutes, three minutes walk. Okay? okay? So they have to give as a CSR. If they don't give it, we are going to take action against them because that is where there is all the drugs that belong to the Kenyan mm. citizens. And they agreed, so we, we will appreciate. We will also thank them once they give us. Okay? okay? Yeah. So generally, that fire explosion really, really took us back. Children have, haven't reported to school. Their school uniforms were burnt. They don't have houses. Everything, including a spoon, was burnt, was raised down. And so we will pray 
we want God to help us and also we want Kenyans to pray for us as Mbakasi resident. You blame the CS for negligence. You even went ahead and you say that you're going to sue, you know, EPRA and equally Nairobi County government for issuing trade licenses to that company. How far is that process? Actually, we are working in a very serious document because we want a watertight, watertight suit in form of a plaint. We, we, were, we were thinking of doing a petition initially, but we are now doing a plaint. But we want watertight. We are still getting information from the victims. We want P3s to attach there. We want uh, proper names of all these victims and their addresses. And also we want uh, from these victims the medical reports, which we must be released by the hospital. So we just don't want to hurry, but we are filing that suit. It's in the process of being made, okay? So we are going to do that because we want these victims to be compensated. Yeah. Yes. And I remember uh, NRGC as well. And the, the people we are dealing with, yeah. we are suing the county government of Nairobi and people are asking why. For you to do any business in Nairobi, you must be given a license by the county government of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And it has to be renewed every year. So which means that the governor, in his wisdom or lack of the same, approved, approved a license mm -hmm. for that for that uh, 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 company yes. in, within Embakasi. We are dealing with EPRA as a, as a, as a defendant. Mm -hmm. County government of Nairobi, EPRA, uh, we are dealing with uh, NEMA, and also we are dealing with the culprits themselves, the owners of the company. We are dealing with all those people. So the energy CS, that is Davis Churcher, assured the Senate that the victims will receive compensation though the time could be delayed and the time frame is not yet shared with the public. What does this say about our efficiency in a, as a country when it comes to disaster management? What I will tell you is that it is better said than done. Look at the county government of Nairobi. They have a budget of 280 million for disaster management. What did the governor do? The governor did not give even a shilling. He promised to give 200 and 50,000 Kenya shillings, which he did not deliver. He did not give anything, and that money was probably eaten during, consumed during the El Nino rains, where we were being told, we are ready for El Nino, we are doing. This was a major disaster in, in Nairobi County that the governor ought to have even cut short his, his, his visit in South Africa. He ought to have just come back, attend to these people, and travel back if he was going to celebrate his birthday there. And I heard that he was dancing kwasa kwasa uko, which is okay, which is okay to each their own. There is no problem with that. But he ought to have come and shown some mercy to these people. These are his people, yeah. okay, as a governor. If, if we delink politics from this, these are his people. He ought to have come and at least sorted out these guys. The CS was, you know, the CS having been summoned four times. The time he was coming to appear, ignored completely that was the fourth time that he was coming to appear then he comes there with uh, with a lot of PR the CS himself did not come to Mbakasi he said that at one point he traveled abroad mm -hmm. you know Mradi and airport is five minutes drive because airport is in Mbakasi's constituency yeah. Mradi if you take a stone and throw at the airport it will just land kwa hiyo ndege alikuwa natumia unaona hiyo so this guy just ignored, just passing by Mradi and then proceeding to the airport. He never came there, okay? Mm -hmm. So he should not tell us that they are planning to comp He will not compensate these people. It is the court that is going to address this issue. We are also dealing with the AG on this matter okay. as a defendant. That is what will represent the national government. So then what does your ideal Kenya look like? So an ideal Kenya is a Kenya where all the arms of government are working, where the institutions are working. A Kenya where a normal Kenyan may be complaining, but does not complain so much that there are no jobs. Okay? A Kenya where a normal youth can wake up and go and get a job and at least get a daily bread from that job. A Kenya where a student can wake up without worrying about school fees and at the same time worrying about reading books okay a kenyan where a mama mboga graduates from selling mboga in a kiosk to owning a supermarket a kenyan where 
a Kenya a, a Kenya where a boda boda rider graduates from riding a boda boda into owning a matatu or a matri famously known as that okay a Kenya where roads the transport system is well 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 taken care of okay a nation where there is provision of amenities okay social amenities and there's also provision of what we need creating an enabling environment for business men and me men and women okay to thrive to do their businesses so that even if they pay taxes there is no pain in that a nation where you will not muzzle things you will not put people under duress to perform certain things a democratic nation okay where people are free to make their choices people follow the rule of law a nation where there are industries okay and we and we stimulate domestic production that is going to help us through a process called uh, mercantilism okay not a nation where corruption is the father and the mother okay not a nation where entitlement takes the course what next for babu are you planning in 2027 you know would you plan to vie for the same seat or perhaps are you aiming for the skies perhaps governor or who knows maybe president what's the next step for you you know Ashley where I've reached the experience that I have the age that I have I am ripe I am ripe and overqualified to be a president of this nation mm -hmm. as early as 2027 in fact I'm late okay I am ripe to be a deputy president as early as 2027 i am ripe and overqualified to be a governor of any any county in this nation starting with nairobi okay as early as 2027 and i am ripe also to go back to embakasi east as a member of national assembly i didn't want to put into the minds of the people what i want to be next because it will distract me from performing my parliamentary duties and the duties and the contract that I signed, the oral contract that I signed by the great people of Mbakasi East constituency mm -hmm. because I want to concentrate there and niwa choshe na kazi zaidi. Then after that by 2026, believe you me, I will call a presser, announce what I want to go for mm -hmm. and that which I will announce, I will take it. Okay, but you shouldn't call a presser, you should call KT News first. I will call it <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. That is Mbakasi East Member of Parliament, Honorable Babu Uwino, and I am Ashley Mazuri. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.